And we're back here on Titans Talk, still taking phone calls, 737-7767. Titans fall to 3-4 and four with a 10th consecutive loss to the Colts on Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Tony, kind enough to wait through the break. Tony, thanks for doing that. You're next up here on Titans Talk. Hey, I listen to you all the time, and I appreciate your comments about the Titans. And uh, you, you all, you on cue with some points, but some points you, you want, you allude to and want to admit to. Now, first of all, all right. So send me straight, Tony. Okay. First of all, when I listen to the game on TV at home, because I'm uh, disabled, the announcers they don't get the Titans no kind of credit. And I don't know if you heard this or not, but somebody ought to have been telling you that. They criticized the Titans for even hit the field. And I don't think that's uh, – I think they're being real biased on TV, and it really discourages people. And the second thing, uh, the Titans, they, you're right, they do need a uh, defensive uh, cornerbacks bad, 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 bad. And uh, But Mariota can do some better stuff than what he's doing. And he's been playing a pro. What other NFL team got three Heisman Trophy winners and can't move the ball? But I really think they do need to upgrade their coaching staff because them plays, people already seen them do in their careers, and they already been studying the films, and they know exactly what they're going to do. And I really appreciate you comment on that. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I think it's fair after any loss to criticize the coaching staff. And yesterday maybe wasn't the best game they've called. But part of that, again, goes back to receivers not necessarily doing their job. And Mario to have an off day. He did not play particularly well yesterday. We talked about that ad nauseum last night on the Electric Power Company's Sunday Sports Central. You need him to play well. Yeah, and he wasn't great yesterday. He, he was good in moments, but not throughout the entire game consistently. And that's what the Titans need. I don't think you have to throw out the entire coaching staff at the moment, maybe the entire special team staff, but I, I don't think you need to make wholesale offensive and defensive changes. Remember, Terry Rubisky came in this offseason with Mike Malarkey to change and simplify this offense. And right now, they're one of the best rushing attacks in football. Mariota has shown real glimpses in the passing game, and he doesn't have really anyone to throw to. Delaney Walker's a real threat. Kendall Wright has some great moments, especially in third down situations. Besides that, that's a pretty bare cupboard at wide receiver. Pretty bare cupboard in terms of guys who can actually catch the balls from him. So that's going to take upgrades in the offseason. Until then, I think you just have to tough through with what they're doing. The, the big thing for the Titans right now is they knew that going into the year. If you remember back preseason, even back in the spring, I said it right here. The way John Robinson and Mike Malarkey are constructing this team is understanding where they're coming from, and that is a position of we have maybe the worst roster in football right now. We've got to get to a point where we're competitive first and foremost. And part of the way that you do that is by... <coughs> Excuse me. Is by fielding a team that can be physical, can match people up front, and allows you to control the clock and control the game. And that's what they've done. And in all of these games, seven games into the season, all of them have been one score type of games either way, with the exception basically of. Miami and even Cleveland. Cleveland got really close last week, but the two wins last two weeks, the Titans dominated, really, and put themselves better in that position. Every other game has essentially been a one-score game where it comes down to the fourth quarter and who can make plays. And in a bunch of those cases, the Titans didn't make the plays. they got to get over that hump. But they're in the position they wanted this year. This is a year where they're trying to be relevant and competitive again. I think they've done that. They've been competitive. If they can win a few more of these games, they're going to be relevant at the end of the year. Then you allow yourself to look at what happened this year, what went right with the personnel, what went right with the, the coaching staff and schemes, and what went wrong, and give yourself a chance to fix it in the offseason. So next year when you come back, I think that's the realistic goal, is next year the Titans can be a playoff contender. This year, they're showing progress. And is, is everything hunky-dory? No, there, there are definitely things to complain about. But 
I think they're still going to point to that progress. And I think that's okay because even the biggest critics out there, when you look at last year and the fact that they were 3-13 and and at the end of the year held the number one overall pick in the draft, that tells you something. That tells you that the Titans stunk. They were the worst team in football last year. And they were tied for being the worst team in football the year before that and won one less game. This was a really, really bad team. They're now an average team. That's a step in the right direction. How quickly it takes to go from average to good is the next question for this team. And we'll see. We'll see if they can do it. Back to the phones and Henry. Henry, hello. Hey, Steve. How you doing, man? Doing well, man. Hey, I have a, a comment and a couple questions here. Okay. Uh, one comment is on the running game. Uh, look, man, the running game is, is good. But the problem is they're not running the football enough for me. Mm-hmm. And to me, when you have a talent like Henry on the sideline, now I understand Mark is the dog. He is the big dog. I get that. But, man, for him to not touch the ball 15, 70 times a game, Henry I'm talking about, to me you're doing a disrespect to your team because the guy has skills. He could help. you talking about you needing weapons. That guy has skills that could help the team. So why he's not touching the football? I mean, one time yesterday? Come on, guys. Come on. Yeah, I agree. I think they can get him a few more carries, a few more touches. In it. But here's the thing. Final drive or – I guess it was the field goal drive down at the end of the game. Yeah, the field goal drive at the end of the game when they're trying to to get points there. You've got him in the game. You've got a perfect matchup where the whole defense is flooding one side. He's wide open. And if he catches the ball, he probably scores. At the very least, he gets it down, and they're looking first and goal type of thing inside the 10, maybe inside the five-yard line. He doesn't catch the ball. You know, I mean, that's the thing is – Derrick Henry is an incredible talent. I think he's going to be really good. But at this point, he's got to understand his role. And when he gets those limited opportunities like that yesterday, he has to make the most of it. And yesterday, he made the worst of it. That was the only bad thing that could happen on that play because it was set up so perfectly. you got to make that play. And we've seen other instances of that where DeMarco Murray dropped the ball in the first half. Delaney Walker dropped the ball. When that happens, you take away those good play calls. And uh, for people criticizing Terry Rubisky or the coaching staff, man, when when they're dialing things up, you've got to be able to make that play because otherwise it's a wasted down. So they got to be better at that. Henry's certainly among that as well. Let's try and sneak in one more here. Let's go to Nate. Nate, good evening. Hey, good evening to you. <coughs> just think, I, I just think the 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 the, um, the ownership of the Titans is, is is not what we 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 expect as as Nashville. I, I, I think we need we need key players to come in to to, to fill in these rosters, and um, you know we, you know we we can't just put all our chips on one player like Marcus Mariotti and we need to we, we need to find we need to find coaches that will trust in the players to, to, to make plays when 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 there you want to trust in players to make plays. You know, I, I think the, 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 the ownership in, in we need to have players come in to Nashville that that, that is, is wanting to make themselves a name for themselves. Um, uh, we we have no star players, and really never had any star athletes come to Nashville. And uh, you know we will never be successful unless uh, the Titans will be uh, uh, that 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 that, that uh, a- not not just average athletes, but athletes come in and, and, and step up, and, and, and the fans. Uh, and, and the coach be back behind them to to um, to uh, to trust in their athletes. I just think the ownership um, it really is, is 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 not great here in the the Titans. All right, Nate, we appreciate the call. I, I'll tell you this much: this coaching staff is completely behind this team. They have the utmost trust in these guys to make plays and do what they're asked to do. The guys have to make the plays. They have to make the plays. And when that happens, you win games. It's that simple. 
They've been in the position to win some of these games. So you just got to make the plays. When they have, they've won. When they haven't, they've lost. It's that simple. And when you look at the Stars, at one point that was a real argument for the Titans. Stars was a real argument. But now you have two Eisman Trophy winners on the roster. You have the 2014 NFL rushing champ. That's just in the backfield. You have the two best tackles grading out in football right now who are both first-round picks. You have a linebacking core that has guys who are getting to the pass rusher. You have a Pro Bowl defensive end. Uh, they're, they're starting to be some stars on this team. The depth lacks, and they're going to have to figure out how to correct that moving forward. But again, it's not a one-year process. And in terms of the ownership, I don't know what more you want Amy Adams Trunk to do. Ownership's been an issue for the Titans in the past. The Adams family has been an issue for the Titans in the past. But <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. I'm losing it tonight. But Amy Adams Strunk has done basically everything since she's taken over as the controlling owner to make this team better. She fired the coach. She hired a new one. She fired the GM. She hired a new one. She hired a team president. She redid the team facility. She made upgrades to the stadium. She went out and allowed them to spend a lot of money in free agency and other things to upgrade the roster, which they have to some degree. It's not an overnight process, but in 18 months as the controlling owner, I don't know what more Amy Adams Strunk could do to make people feel like she cares to make people she moved here to nashville she's here all the time that was one of the big knocks she wants to be a part of it she wants them to win she wants to be the answer she's trying to give them the resources to get it done we gotta take a break we need some resources of our own i maybe need a water we'll be back right after this <laughs> 